both cases like uh, i would like to see uh, first case if you have any questions related to the simulation uh, you can ask me macha vashishta is raising his hand so yes in iit lingo we have two things we have yes i'm sorry so that might be a glitch actually i lowered my hand okay so i was saying that in iit lingo we have uh, two things if somebody does very well we say macha diya or uh, somebody does very badly we say makha diya so we have macha vashishta so you eternally you know you are doing very well okay so <clears throat> let's let's i hope you have come across these lingo right macha diya makha diya and you just since you people have spent less time on campus probably you don't know but there are general even today we use this kind of uh words because we are accustomed some of these terms are fed into our system so many times that you know we end up using it <clears throat> okay so let me so what is the meaning of uh, so this is the uh, which name is a telugu name or is it a tamil name or is it a kannada name what name is it vashishta means generally it is be kannada i think so is am i correct yes uh, sir telugu sir telugu okay so what is the meaning um i don't know vashita means train uh, but macha i don't it has a tamil meaning of friend sorry tamil meaning of tamil in tamil it means uh, like uh, your close friend uh, but vashita okay. it means train uh, only that uh, that is okay so fine <clears throat> okay so uh i now i hope you can why my board is not with the board is here right? so yeah so yeah so any question on the simulation side if you have you can ask me right now no question on no. simulation side all of you have done simulation nicely huh yes yes me sir yes tell me uh during the feedback uh, the policy that we done i had yes. tried to add uh, i tried to add that but uh, the bandwidth went down significantly uh for most uh, like yeah, i tried so, combination hmm. bandwidth uh, at which stage did it go down so it, it went down at the input point or at the output of the first it stage was, where the input itself yeah so input itself we expect it to go down because uh, if you don't get a proper low impedance and uh, so did you see whether the dc bias point is it are correct or not yes sir dc bias point was fine so you can share the screen let me you know uh, unshare you can probably share your screen and I then we can uh, outside right now you don't, don't have, have it ready uh, okay. i'm outside right now okay fine so you know uh, we can figure out exactly if you simul if you have problem you can share your screen we can discuss uh, or let us for the for the time being let us keep a separate simulation session maybe tomorrow sometimes uh, we can connect uh, before the class for a simulation session so those who are having doubt they can ask question regarding the simulation right then so otherwise it will take time anybody who has to share screen then it will become again like a full simulation class we will not be able to Uh, go to the theory so let us do whenever we will have a simulation session i will dedicatedly discuss that and uh, we will keep it separate so let us not uh, mix these two things so it is a better idea i think to uh, whenever there is a simulation session or discussion on simulations required i will keep separate class so maybe tomorrow we will keep it for this one or even today after our regular session if we have some time let us decide so uh, everybody should be informed ahead of time so we will keep it tomorrow so for simulation let us have one hour session tomorrow sometime i will let you know so let us talk about differential amplifier uh, in the video lecture uh, any any doubt on the video lecture part any questions on that part so in case you have questions you can also share your screen show me which part of the video lecture which part of the screenshot those things also you can do in case you have any doubt or you can 
uh, if you have taken any snapshot of the doubt portion you can paste it so concept point of view i have just tried to describe i hope the concept is clear <clears throat> for the main requirement of differential amplifier why it is required and some of the important definitions of the differential amplifier like what is the differential signal what is common mode signal what is common mode gain what is differential gain uh, what is common mode rejection ratio right so for differential amplifier i think uh, these topic should be clear so this is pending uh, so uh, yes so the current mirror like the active load parts are like uh, how to analyze that i was having problems because like how to find the gain how to find all like uh the small signal no, gain uh, current mirror so current mirror in the 10th lecture i don't think there is a current mirror load right is it there mentioned uh, briefly at the end like active loads either a current mirror or a current source load like for saying if the output yeah, those things we will cover so current mirror you leave it we will uh, we will discuss it in more detail uh, for the differential for the resistive load part uh, whatever we have discussed why the lens the thickness is not increasing thickness is this okay so Still, the thickness is remaining same. This is the problem sometimes. So, although I am checking this pen, but the differential, no. And I am increasing the thickness, but thickness is remaining same. Now it has increased. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, as I said, for the uh, resistive part, you can tell me what are the issues that you have so far. So, differential amplifier. We have looked into the. basic differential amplifier with resistive load so for in this case uh, you need to tell me whether you have any doubt so i think uh, in the first lecture we have discussed the dc operating point right uh, op means operating point dc operating point how does the dc behave the two voltages if you are keeping these two voltages same the dc voltage at the drain will be same source potential dc potential how it will be determined uh so then you have the uh input so you have a input common mode range right so input common mode range have i discussed this in the lecture input common mode uh no so this one was not in the not in lecture 10 okay so then the thing is that we have also discussed the output swing output swing i'm not sure output swing was there Range, minimum, guess. maximum. Those things you can figure out. It will not be very difficult. Output swing, just like we have done it for the single-ended amplifier. Here also you can do it. Differential gain we have done right. The differential gain. Uh, we have discussed the common mode gain. Uh, and based on this, we have discussed the example. This is the definition of common mode rejection ratio. I hope this was discussed right. Common mode rejection ratio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, yes. Yes, tell me quickly. Any any question? So, common mode rejection ratio. How to find out? What is the significance of that? Yes, yeah, somebody is trying to say something. Then uh, we had discussed. I think frequency response also to some extent, right? Frequency response was discussed. all these things were discussed now uh still in any part you want me to go a little deeper again and try to discuss those parts again you can tell me so we had of course the signal definition also if you say uh signal definition common mode differential etc that those things also we had discussed breaking the input signal into common mode and uh, differential and then analyzing the differential gain separately common mode gain separately so any question so far on this parts you can openly ask and then we will be discussing those parts uh, so the frequency response part uh, i had doubts okay so tell me what is the doubt so like uh, if we consider ideal current source then there was one and then with current source there was some other happening but then uh, how to use mirror effect i was not sure because Finding gain from one terminal to another. 
for single ended we can do but like for differential i was not sure how to do that uh okay so uh let me figure out exactly what you are saying so you're trying to say that the uh differential and common mode so you have understood that for taking the frequency response also we need to see whether we are looking at differential or common mode so before we go to frequency response any other question before you know regarding the other upper parts frequency response is number 7 before that anything else that uh, you have doubt in input common mode range you somebody said it is not covered in that so i will prefer this order so right now i am going to discuss a little bit about input common mode range then i will come to frequency response so anything uh, apart from icmr that is not clear the concept that this this is going to be ac ground for a fully differential signal and uh, also that these two devices are identical right now we have considered that these two devices are exactly identical then you are getting a, a fully differential uh, signal at the output so if you have any question regarding these things that have been covered icmr has not been covered apart from that any other upper portion over here common mode gain is clear half circuit for common mode differential that is very important you know understanding the concept of half circuit half circuit analysis for differential amplifier that you should be able to visualize considering that differential signals this point is going to be ac ground so any signal whatever signal you may have applied on v1 and whatever other signal at v2 so we break it down into common mode vcm and v differential so vcm anyway it uh, ideally the differential amplifier should provide very low vcm and it should provide high vcm so ultimately we are dealing with only the differential part of the signal and for differential part of the signal this point is going to be ac ground that part also we discussed in detail some analysis was given derivations were given etc etc but uh, apart from that anything else the concept should be clear uh, i thought since it is already recorded so i can just give that lecture for yeah so let me just compare the icmr icmr input common mode range input common mode range very simple but very important so for a differential amplifier uh, just like in a common source amplifier we have certain input range so uh, here also ultimately in a differential amplifier with resistive load we will be applying a dc signal on the top of that there will be the ac signal right so generally the way you can model it that uh, uh, what will be the scenario scenario will be that suppose the previous stage differential amplifier is feeding the next stage differential amplifier right so suppose you have a previous stage differential amplifier and it is having current source and it is having its own input so uh, remember that when we have this kind of wires you don't think that that is connected so whenever there is a connection between this crossing wires i only i put a dot so that is a general convention so in a particular circuit diagram you may find many wires crossing each other horizontally vertically uh, but unless there is a dot we assume that there is no connection between those wires like if i'm drawing this horizontal wire like this right uh, it is it, it is crossing over these two vertical lines but it is not connected to this however if i have to draw another stage uh you know suppose i have to draw another stage and then i you know want to take output of the first stage then i will draw a dot over here so this is you know this means there is a connection so wherever there is a dot there is a connection whenever at this point there is no dot there is no connection so that part that thing also should be clear so this is for example i have just cascaded two differential amplifiers amplifier 1 and 2 and uh, here if you look at just the dc dc means when the signal is zero no signal applied so in that case we assume that ultimately both the inputs here and here will be at a dc potential uh, so suppose they are at same potential voltage that will result in some dc value over here and that will also basically decide what is the input dc to the next stage so this dc bias that you are getting at the input of the second stage it is determined by two factors in this case the one is the bias current of the first stage ib1 and second is the r of the second stage rd1 
so these two factors ultimately determine what will be the dc bias so depending upon the signal conditions in particular circuits uh, we may get different dc conditions so the differential amplifier inputs may face a particular dc value which is basically we are talking about the dc bias value which is a common mode value so when we say <clears throat> input common mode range we are just trying to figure out what is the range of that input common dc value or common mode signal that the uh, <clears throat> the the circuit can handle so for that analysis uh, how do we proceed one possibility is we can do it directly here another possibility is that we can make the half circuit the common mode half circuit and analyze it over there so uh, in this circuit also we can do it so all we have is both of the input terminals are connected to vcm <clears throat> why this analysis why this parameter is important because ultimately determines what is the you know uh, input dc for the differential amplifier so ultimately the signal may be sitting on the top of the dc uh, so the dc bias what is the range of dc bias applicable when you are cascading multiple stages you have to be uh, you know uh, you have to take into account this icmr the input common mode range if the dc point of the first stage or dc output of the first stage is not within the icmr of the next stage then you can't directly connect it right so you need to bring it within the icmr of the second stage that's what we did in the first assignment you saw that uh, we were struggling to interface the common gate stage with the common source stage directly because the voltage level was going too high at the output and then finally we put a, a common drain and shifted the voltage down and then we connected it to a nmos input player pair so here likewise the differential amplifier also when you are cascading multiple stages in a signal path we need to be we need to make sure that the output dc level of the previous stage is matching is within the icmr of the differential amplifier so now if that that idea is clear now uh, how do we say that what is the vcm maximum and minimum very easy based on your common but whatever we have studied that is a single ended amplifier based on that you should be able to tell me that what is the vcm that that means what is the uh, v uh, we can call it vcm min and what is the vcm max quickly vcm min ha uh, sir so there is no threshold voltage vth yeah, yeah what is vcm mean <clears throat> uh, vt we will need to know for that at the common point vgs for uh, both m and m has to be more than one threshold or greater than equal to one threshold okay so uh, here what will determine the minimum vcm what are the param what are the factors which will determine the minimum value of vcm so the gate voltage of third transistor okay vg3 because uh, if you, if you reduce the vcm the dc level at the input goes down which transistor will be in trouble first that which transistor will come out of saturation first quickly can these two transistor ideally these two transistors can they come out uh, from saturation as we are lowering the gate voltage they won't sir entering the bias current so they won't uh, the emptying should yeah so this uh, this potential is constant ideally this is not changing because this is determined by bias current times rd vdd minus rd rd the drain voltage is constant and you are lowering the gate voltage so definitely these two transistors will not come out of saturation they will remain in saturation but as you are reducing the gate voltage what will happen this source voltage has to reduce because vgs has to be maintained to support id by 2 right so it has to support id by 2 id by 2 and therefore you know uh, the vgs of these two transistors also need to come down therefore the source voltage will also go down by equivalent amount and if this voltage goes down it will ultimately the uh, m3 will enter into triode because the vd will be less than vg minus vt right so uh, if i call it say vs vs Min, what is it? Vg3 minus Vtc, right? So if this is a Vs min, then what is the Vcm min? 
here we already have with min. VS min plus VTH one or VTH two. Yeah, so actually it should be VGS VGS one because it has to support that current also. So VGS one. So V S min plus VGS one, which is equal to what? VT one plus V overdrive. So V overdrive term is a variable term. You can uh, reduce this by increasing the W by L. That simply means that uh, if you increase the W by L of input device, the VGS required to support the same ID Y2 will be smaller. Therefore, the VGS required will be smaller, right? So, so that is one parameter. So both. So in order to now uh, allow lower VCM, what are the options we have? In order to increase the common mode range. We would like to reduce this quantity VCM min. So, what are the parameters we have at hand? Suppose ID is given, ID is constant. So, in case of a given ID, what are the ways we have? So, one is what? Quickly, I already gave you the half the answer. Increase W by L, so we need less of V over range. Yeah, so W by L of what? Of M1 and M2. And Yeah, so if you are, you know, even M3 is there, right? So for a given ID, if you increase the W by L. W by L of M3 lowers VG3. So, yes. So if you increase the W by L of M3, VG3 required to get the same current will also be reduced. And as a result, uh, you will be getting lower value of VS possible. If the VS uh, value is lower, definitely VCM min will also be lower. So uh, uh, that is one thing. What about v uh, VCM max? So here, of course, uh, you know, if you increase the W by L of M1, M2, what happens to some other circuit parameters or basically circuit features? What happens to the gain? Uh, increasing W by L should improve the gain, right? So. Yes, so GMRG, in this case, the GMRG by 2. So you are going to get, uh, if you are looking at the overall gain, the W by L increasing means increasing the GM of one and two, and therefore the gain should increase. What about uh, uh, bandwidth? Bandwidth should reduce, obviously, because your uh, gain is increasing, mother effect will increase, also CGS, CGD, all of them are increasing. So the parasitic capacitance will increase, therefore bandwidth will reduce. What about W by L of M3? So what is the effect of increasing W by L of M3? Quickly, quickly. So it decreases so the, the common mode. capacitance will increase. Yes, so the capacitance will increase. So some. Hmm. So like CMRR will be affected then. Yes, so CMRR is uh, affected because CMRR is low because this is acting like a good current source. If 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 you have a T, D, S or overall capacitance between this node and ground increasing because of the large device size. So what will happen eventually? This will become like bypass. So you remember in a common source amplifier or common emitter, you may have uh, taken these examples where you have a common source and then you put a resistor and then you bypass it also. So this resistor is not affecting in that case the AC response. It is only for uh, basically getting your DC bias current properly set. So here also same thing, if you are having a capacitor at this node, between this node and AC ground, our capacitor is increasing because of larger size of M3. What will happen? This particular transistor, uh, it will be almost shorted. So basically this will become AC ground. It will act like an AC ground even for common mode signal. We will discuss that. So fine, the, the, that common mode part analysis part we will do. So that is the disadvantage if you do this. Uh, Differential signal, it really does not, ideally does not matter because the differential signal, this point is AC ground, ideally, so it should not matter. Uh, but uh, in case of uh, noise, etc., we will see that if you have mismatches, then it can create more noise. We will look at that. Okay, so VCM max, what is VCM max? Sir, it will be the maximum of uh, VDD or VDD minus ID RD by 2 plus VTH. Okay, VDD maximum or ID, ID, VDD minus ID, ID by 2 max. So, uh, first thing is uh, you have 
basically the if you are increasing the vcm which transistor in turn into trouble if you go on increasing the vcm both side of course you know you, by now you know the answer m1 and m2 will increase go into trouble because the drain voltage is fixed at uh, you know vdd minus id rd by 2 so the drain voltage is fixed so the moment vcm becomes uh, you know greater than vd plus vt right so it becomes greater than vdd minus id rd by 2 plus vt right the moment vcm becomes higher than this the m1 m2 will enter into triode region right that you understand and therefore we need to make sure that vcm is greater than this so that basically tells us if, what is the vcm max we can't go higher than this so now of course as you said uh, we need to in certain cases it may be possible that uh, you know this quantity vdd id id by 2 plus vt this quantity is positive if it is positive uh, you know in that case we can't really increase vcm beyond vdd that's what you are saying so that is okay means that you can uh, for the time being assume the condition that okay means ultimately the input signal is always limited by vdd so Uh, we can include that condition also that uh, the max will be either vdd or this max of vdd and this this is clear to all of you so this is very simple common mode range depending upon uh, the transistor saturation region condition you can determine what is the maximum value and minimum value any question on this before we proceed further uh, so you said maximum of two values right one was this vdd minus idrd by 2 plus vt what was the other one so vdd provided you know this quantity vdd minus vt becomes the Terms are be positive, then okay. this quantity will be greater than VDD, right? Okay, okay. Generally, you know, we don't design it that way, but uh, in certain conditions, suppose you are limited by bandwidth, your RD is smaller, ID. Uh, so in that case, it may happen. So just to be sure that okay, by we are implying that we will not have signals greater than VDD at the input or the DC level will not be beyond VDD. Yes. Uh, so, any other question on this part before we go to the next part? So, next part was. Uh, so, I hope common mode gain is clear, right? CMRR common mode. This is clear to all of you. Very important. Yes, sir. Okay. So, the next part is your. Uh, why it is inserting here? Uh, well. i want to insert the page at this location but it is yeah okay so next is your uh, frequency response so for frequency response uh, we definitely have our differential circuit which is similar to common uh, common source state so our you know differential analysis we simply use the half circuit right for half circuit is very similar whatever you have for the common source same thing so there is no point repeating this right this is your differential half circuit second is our uh, this is your differential mode so for common mode what is the half circuit so if you take the half circuit you are basically uh, either you can take the half or you can basically combine both of them it doesn't matter same thing so suppose i'm taking uh, r d by 2 i'm merging the two branches r d by 2 and this becomes 2 w by l and uh, we have basically so current is id in by merging the two transistors and then you have the tail current source which is of course is uh, bias vg whatever and this is also uh, the input signal we in so for this signal what is the frequency response how do we find out the frequency response of this particular circuit this is the common mode half circuit are you, all of you comfortable with this that this is the common mode half circuit yes sir what yes, is sir. the common so what is the frequency response first of all uh, if even without analyzing the small circuit a uh, small signal circuit what we can say about the frequency response of this so first thing is uh, you are having of course in this case also you are having similar effect and input to output there is a cgd so like what we have done in the common source we can find out what is the overall gain 
so again we know that this is a uh, you know source degenerated common source gain will be low because of this large impedance so if you want to make it even more ideal you can go for cascode current source then it will become even better differential amplifier right because a good differential amplifier should have a very low common mode gain so for the low common mode gain it will be good if you can have a larger impedance so maybe you can increase the l you can use cascode current mirror you, all those things you can do to get a larger output impedance of this current source uh, now if you look at the net parasitic capacitance at this node uh, what are the components so in this particular if i look at the cs so at this cs of course we have the cd b of this if i call this m1 call this m3 whatever so uh, this is the tail current source of the differential amplifier so you have the this point is ac ground and therefore you get the cgd of this amplifier and uh, here anyway you have seen that it is almost like a, a unity gain assuming that rd is not too large in that case we don't get much of a cgs coming because of uh, the miller effect and then you have the cdb so mostly uh, we see that the cdb the cgd and cdb of the bottom transistor that means cgd uh 3 right and uh, c d b 3 plus c s b 2 or 1 whatever 1 2 common basically now it is two times so basically uh, you can take two times of this these are the components which are going to come into picture if we talk about cs so as compared to the input net capacitance uh, this particular capacitance is definitely going to be lower because here you are having mostly the cgd cdb <clears throat> cgs terms are not coming miller miller effect is also not there so generally this effect this will be slightly lower uh, and also the impedance at this node what is the net impedance at this node if i want to find out the pole frequency corresponding to this node what is the net impedance at this node Please. Uh, 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 one by GM of. By GM plus R D by two. Yes. Yeah, so R down, R down parallel, R up, R down is R O. R up is almost uh, one upon GM. If I assume that R D is significantly less than R O, so in that case the R up will be one upon GM, and therefore the impedance over here is small. So the R C time constant of this pole is also uh, relatively small. Therefore the effect of this capacitance will come at high frequency. And uh, here what is the effect so if you look at the uh, high frequency where the one upon omega sts starts becoming low right uh, so in that case what happens your overall gain of this amplifier earlier it was gm rd or basically here you are having two times w by l so two times gm rd by 2 because id is also double w by l is also double as compared to single sided therefore it becomes 2 gm and rd by 2 because they have been clubbed so it remains gmrd uh, upon 1 uh, plus gm rs so gm is again 2 gm and uh, you have the rs which is nothing else but ro of this mosfet so earlier it was this value but at high frequency because of the cs if this gets shorted it will simply become uh, 2 gmrd by 2 basically gmrd so what we see is that because of this parasitic capacitance we can have a transition we can have a low to high transition the gain can increase at higher frequency so that means uh, you know the common mode rejection that we are getting because of uh, the ideal current source that will degrade at higher frequency that is the main uh, issue so this particular capacitance parasitic capacitance that you see at the uh, source point because of the parasitic capacitance of the tail current source and some contribution from the input devices if you go on increasing the current source area w by l of the tail current source if you go on increasing the w by l of this guy you will go on increasing the cs and therefore that frequency at which the you know common mode gain basically starts uh basically having a uh it should it does not exactly increases but only thing is that the decline of gain reduces so 
the condition that this transition is happening it will reach faster or earlier that is the main thing so that's why the limitation comes on the w by l of this current source transistors because of this common mode range so if you just you can't blindly go on increasing the w by l the otherwise it will you know badly affect your common mode gain and uh, it will actually basically slow down the reduction of common mode gain <clears throat> So in this case, this is the main factor. If you look at the overall response for differential, <clears throat> what is the scenario for differential? It is just like a common source. So you have, if you have two poles, if the input impedance, the source impedance is finite, non-zero, you will get two poles just like in common source amplifier, you get it. That is the story for the uh, differential. For common mode, uh, we say that, okay, uh, if you look at the behavior of this particular, uh, this uh, CS, this will come at higher frequency because we have justified that CS is smaller, impedance over here is uh, also smaller. It will come at higher frequency. Till that frequency again, the poles because of these two are going to act this at the input node and the output node. So those two poles, suppose they have acted, right? So they have acted and uh, the gain is reducing the common, this is a common mode gain, common mode gain in dB. And this is the differential gain in dB. So uh, for the common mode circuit also, the situation is similar. Only thing is, of course, the magnitude will be much high, high, lower so as compared to differential gain. But the poles, it is also going to have two poles. Input side, we're going to have one pole. This drain point is going to give you one pole. So both of them are going to contribute to this first 20 dB per decade gray uh, slope, and then minus 40 dB per decade slope. Those things are going to come as it is. But after that, once we come to a point where this uh, CS is contributing. How do we find out which point CS will be contributing? The approximate method is uh, that we just find out the impedance looking into the source, the impedance looking into the source, uh, combining the effect of CS. So that is, uh, we have the overall gain given by GMRD upon one plus uh, the overall impedance GM times the ZS, ZS is one upon SCS uh, parallel the RO, right? So this is what we have. So therefore, if we just uh, simplify this, we can get the expression. So this thing in the bracket will be uh, RO into one upon SCS upon RO plus one upon SCS, which is uh, equal to RO upon RO SCS plus one. So this is uh, the sorry? the gains are like uh, GMRD by one plus two GMRD. Yeah, two GM. So yeah, so two GM. So and now if you you know take it up, so you are getting basically this factor in the numerator you know, jumping up. So you will get GM RD, and then you are going to get one plus RO SCS coming in the uh, numerator, and then in the numerator denominator also you have these factors. So you will get uh, basically RO SCS plus one plus two GM. That is what is going to happen. So you have getting a pole, but you're also getting a zero over here. And this zero is again at uh, what frequency? So here we are seeing that again, uh, this, uh, we have a pole and a zero both coming together. And in this approximate analysis, we have seen that uh, if, your, uh, if your CS is large, because of this particular term, your gain is going to increase after you know this RO SCS. Now this is again a approximate analysis. If you look at the pole, pole in this particular case, the frequency is coming at uh, basically omega equal to uh, if you have RO SCS. Sorry, RO SCS plus one should not have been there. So one upon RO plus uh, SCS, RO, fine, one and two GM. So two GM should not have been there. Two GM times. Uh, I think it's two GM RO, sir. So uh, the zero term and the you know pole term. So if uh, we look at this, basically, we can say that after the zero terms comes in picture, what will be the role of zero term? We have discussed this while discussing the Bode plot. 
if you encounter a zero term it will effectively reduce the slope so if you have say initially minus 20 db per decade slope this is minus 40 db per decade slope it after encountering a zero the slope will again reduce and it will go back to minus 20 db per decade so the differential gain however it does not you know reduce it does not increase so differential gain keeps on reducing right so minus 20 db per decade and minus 40 db per decade whereas the common mode gain initially dropped with minus 20 minus 40 but then the slope became lower so actually in magnitude it is not that the common mode gain increases in the actual frequency response only thing that is happening is the slope of decay of the common mode gain that will reduce earlier it was much sharper at higher frequency it will become only minus 20 db per decade but the the degradation in the differential gain keeps going on minus 40 db per decade so what is the meaning of this that at higher frequency the differential gain is going down by a larger rate whereas the common mode gain is not going down by the same rate it is going down by a lower rate so that means that at low frequency whatever common mode ejection ratio you have calculated right the gmrd divided by this number so that basically uh, reduces at higher frequency right so because of this change in the slope of the uh, common mode gain circuit at higher frequencies you will get basically reduction in cmrr cmrr is nothing else but division of these two right the differential gain divided by the common mode gain so if the slope uh, of the common mode gain reduces at higher frequency this uh, response the cmrr plot will be also in trouble so you may have CMRR increasing with frequency. That's what happens. Right? So you just take division of these two. Uh, eventually, you will see that at higher frequencies, the CMRR starts basically increasing. So that is what is the main uh, you know, uh, conclusion out of this. And uh, that's why the sizing effect of this uh, current source becomes very, very critical. Is that clear? Uh, so like now here I have not done the exact analysis. Exact analysis means uh, I have assumed that while taking the gain of this stage, I am still using GMRD by two gain, which is not accurate because by the time you reach at this pole frequency, uh, the gain has already dropped significantly. So that is just an approximation to give you a trend. Exact analysis we can do the derivation that I have not done. Yes. Uh, so the pole was coming at around like. Uh, in terms of omega, it's coming to GM by CS, so it's a very high frequency. Yeah, that's why if you do exact analysis, the GM one upon GM because the time constant here is given by one upon GM. So if you look at the overall uh, impedance, uh, it will be dictated by the RC time constant of GM and one upon SCS. So uh, for that, if you uh, arrive at the exact expression for gain, GN RD upon GM, uh, you know SCS, and uh, look at the so for example here gmrd upon 1 plus 2 gm uh, in times zs so here i have basically looked at the gmrd gain which is not exactly you know correct uh, so if you look at the ro plus 1 upon cs ro cs so if you, that is the reason if you have, if you look at only the current uh, gain that will give you a more accurate i would say uh, result so here for example if i I have to get the exact value. Let me look at the exact derivation. So this one I know, this is approximate. So let us see, for exact, uh, we can look at say the transconductance factor. Transconductance factor is also ultimately same, GM upon one plus GM, this thing. And uh, considering some of the other poles that they have already passed, so already, Assuming that uh, RD pole has already passed, you may uh, assume only the small signal current gain. And there also, you are getting this 1 plus 2 GM and uh, the parallel of this. And uh, therefore, if I look at the this thing, the parallel combination of, uh, yeah. So at this node, you are having the net RO given by this GM RO here, which is RO SCS, RO plus 1 upon SCS. And uh, uh, our opposite field is going to go up, and you have the this one plus two GM RO, and uh, therefore we are going to get this one 
and the pole over here. If you look at the pole, that is uh, one plus GMRO. You can, if you ignore this one, and then you get the pole. The pole, because of this term, is coming uh, basically omega equal to one upon two GM uh, TS. So this is the pole term. With the zero term, you are seeing. Sorry. The GM will be the numerator, right? So otherwise, this does not have the dimensions of uh, radians per second. Like one by RC dimension, right? This is R by C dimension. Uh, yeah, sorry. The digital writing, I generally mess up very badly. So, yeah. So, GM upon uh, the omega is basically GM S. Uh, upon STS, yeah, 2 GM upon uh, CS. So this is your omega term, and then you are getting the uh, zero term given by the frequency over here. So if you look at the omega term, ultimately, uh, if your uh, omega is much greater than this, so in that case, what can we say? So let me uh, simplify this expression. What is happening? Which circuit I should delete? Maybe this one. If you look at the exact analysis, we are having uh, GM RO, and you can take maybe uh, one plus RO SCS in the numerator, and you can take out uh, maybe GM uh, RO from here also, two GM RO, whatever, in the numerator. Therefore, you are left with, I'm ignoring this uh, one, so you are left with one plus RO SCS upon GM. And you can, if you want to take one upon two GMRO, that is not going to be consequential. This thing will go. So this is the expression. Now, if you uh, look at omega, which is much greater than, say, uh, much greater than GM upon SCS. So this is nothing else but uh, RO I have taken, right? So GM RO I have taken out. So RO also goes out. Uh, and uh, the thing is, I don't get very comfortable with this, uh, you know, writing things in this mode. Uh, so GM, if you take out GM and also I'm taking out RO, so I'm left with one plus uh, SCS upon GM RO two times. And uh, now if you look at this, uh, if I'm assuming that my omega is, uh, Again, I'm doing the mistake. RO is not there. So oh, SCS. RO gone. Yeah, so if you are getting uh, omega much greater than S upon, uh, you know, GM upon SCS, sorry, uh, only CS. So in that case, uh, I can basically uh, ignore the one term over here. So if your omega is much greater than this quantity, the one term goes away. And uh, then I am left with GM RO, GM RO. And uh, then uh, I'm left with the SCS term, and uh, in the numerator we have one plus RO SCS upon uh, CS, uh, you know, uh, GM upon CS. So CS comes to the numerator and GM. And uh, therefore, if I look at the uh, GM SCS, uh, right? So GM. CS goes up and you're left with basically the S part on the numerator. And uh, therefore you are left, left with one upon S plus RO SCS. So this quantity becomes, uh, the, the thing is that uh, this particular software is not letting me stretch it down. I'm, I'm getting crowded with, either I have to delete everything. So, so there is one, a panning option. One note. Where is the panning option? Uh, sir, in the taskbar below, there is there are two hands. Okay, all right. I didn't see that. Okay, fine. So then I have that option. All right. So yeah. So now I have this uh, thing, which is uh, one plus R O S T S upon S. And CS upon GM. So if I look at this term, uh, 
1 upon ro plus 1 upon s plus ro scs and the cs upon gm so uh, ro uh, ro cs and uh, upon gm so now in this term if i say omega at what frequency uh, the ro cs term will become important so that is going to happen at this value so uh, if your omega goes on increasing and becomes much higher i can ignore this term and then i will get the ro scs term and uh, that basically uh, yeah so the exact analysis i have actually uh, i have to look into it how exactly it comes at uh, one upon gm scs so gm upon scs so this one again it seems uh so the pole is coming in. the so pole is at according to pole. this the pole is at gm 2.2 gm upon cs right yes yeah, so 2 gm upon cs and the zero is at 1 by cs ro but the uh, ro is generally much more than 1 by gm right so then the zero is coming before the pole in this case no so ro cs is much lower right so on the so if your ro cs generally 1 upon ro cs if you look at this this is a lower value Whereas uh, GM, by CS. GM upon CS, this is a higher value. So this ROCS will be at a much lower value. GM upon CS will be coming at a uh, higher value. So in that case, uh, this is, you know, this uh, term, the pole term is going to come at higher value only. And uh, till at that point, what you can assume is this term. Uh, if I take out, say, 1 plus, uh, 1 plus S, uh, upon one upon rocs so one upon rocs as compared to s this omega at this particular point is what it is actually uh much smaller than this particular omega uh therefore i can ignore this one that's what i can do because right now i'm at a frequency which is much higher than this value so in the numerator for simplification i can just say that okay this is s rocs approximately and uh, the denominator part you are left with uh, the expression of one plus uh, two gm, whatever it was. Uh, I hope I can go this side also. So you are left with this expression, which is one plus two gm ro uh, plus ro scs. And here also uh, you can ignore this one two gm ro ro scs. So ro gets cancelled. You have basically scs upon uh, scs plus two gm. And uh, therefore, if I look at the expression overall, uh, it is the same, 1 to GM upon SCS, right? So here, what will happen if your omega, uh, if I look at this expression, if your omega is much greater than, uh, omega is much greater than CS or GM upon SCS, in that case, uh, this term will start diminishing and therefore, uh, you will be left with only the unity term. So that is, uh, if your omega is higher, like in this case, if your omega is uh, higher, uh, then basically after this frequency, you can say that for omega much greater than uh, GM upon SCS, your frequency, this term will start basically uh, becoming unity. So for lower than this, this term will be 1 plus 2 gm upon SCS. And that will uh, also have basically the, the S going up. And anyway, uh, it will basically lead to the pole term. So if you look at the exact uh, expression, uh, only for omega much greater than gm upon SCS, you can ignore this term. And then the gain will remain uh, equal to GMRO because other terms we have anyway taken out. Whereas if you include this term, then there is a uh, you know frequency dependency coming. So uh, that is the whole thing. So I, I, I understand that I have messed it up. I need to do it more clearly to show this effect. So this exact analysis that you said that the zero effect or the pole, uh, you know, this uh, lowering gain comes at this frequency of omega equal to uh, one of uh, GM upon SCS. Uh, so that is coming because of this, you know, approximation that, okay, uh, you simplify and figure out what is the effect of the GM on SCS term. And only 
uh, in the in the numerator term once you have the simplified expression over here in the denominator term you can see that for omega much greater than gm1 scs you can basically ignore this and becomes unity and then under that condition the gain will be restored to gm ro rather than 1 plus gm ro uh, you know gm ro upon 1 plus gm r uh, sorry gm rd upon 1 plus gm ro so that is uh, the transition where it transits from gm ro to uh, close to basically uh, gm ro upon 1 plus gm rs so that is the effect of this uh, rs so this is again a simplified expression that okay it tells you uh, that if you are <clears throat> omega is much higher than this frequency uh, the effect of um, <clears throat> basically the gain value the gain contribution because of this term uh, the source term will uh, you know start increasing because of the bypassing effect so i have messed it up i can do it more cleanly to show that you know exactly this is the frequency but uh, after which the gain actually transits smoothly from gmrd to or basically the opposite way gmrd upon 1 plus gmro to gmrd is particular this particular frequency is that clear i know i have messed it up i need to do it more clearly let me you know let me do it a little bit uh, you know once more in a fresh page or maybe just pan it so you have this gm rd and uh, 1 plus gm the z term which is the 1 upon scs and uh, you have parallel with the ro of the mosfet these are the two things we have and we want to see that okay what is the effect of this approximation involved is that gmrd is uh, the gain at that frequency which is not true gmrd uh, the gain has already reduced because of the first two poles of the circuit so that is the approximation taken now if you just look at the effect of this particular pole the role of this particular pole or this particular rc time constant is to uh, reduce the uh, increase the gain from gmrd upon 1 plus gmro back to uh, gmrd so that is that will be clear if you just look at the frequency dependency here here if omega uh, tends to zero or very small frequency 1 upon sc will be very large as compared to ro therefore i can just ignore and i can call it that it is you know uh, 1 upon 1 plus gmrd so that is very obvious and uh, the second case is omega tends to very large frequency there uh, one upon scs term dominate and therefore you are left with gm rd upon uh, one plus gm upon scs because there the scs term becomes dominant so scs so that way also we can see that uh, the condition uh, for this to happen will be that okay at higher uh, now in this case now once this uh, at higher frequency once this condition has been reached uh, what is the uh, so here we can look at the overall uh, in year if you look at the omega much greater than uh, omega much greater than say gm upon cs so in that case uh, this term becomes almost you know negligible and they will get just the gmrd term for omega uh, which is lower than this you still get the gm upon 1 upon scs term so that way we can say that okay this is the uh, you know transition point uh, at which or beyond which or across which this effect is getting visible so that is again an approximation assuming the fact that rd gm rd is the gain so if we take the exact expression for the gain which is again already a frequency of omega it has already reduced you will get a slightly different expression this is a simplified expression and uh, it shows that uh, beyond uh, this is the frequency beyond which you will get that transition is that clear yes is that clear yes okay so uh next is your so this thing is important the uh, uh where is that plot plot the plot of the common mode gain and the uh, this thing your differential gain with respect to 
frequency and how the common mode gain increases so i have deleted that part uh, but uh, you know that part should be understood now if we look at say could you delete a page delete a page anyway so uh so what else do we have for this one frequency response anyway their signal definition is done common mode gain uh, we have already seen uh, so active load did i do it in that class active load you started active load sessions. i had started yes okay so active load uh, again the story is very similar to common mode uh, sorry common source stage and uh, we have seen that whatever applications whatever different conditions we have applied for the common uh source amplifier the same things will be true here so this is a common uh, this is a referential amplifier with common sorry current source load so this is your m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 and in this case if you look at the uh, small signal half circuit it is very similar to the common source amplifier with current source load there is no difference and uh, the gain you can figure out what would be the gain for that half circuit right so if you look at the uh, overall let me rather than going to the gain first of all let us talk about the dc so dc point of view what are the conditions over here so just like in the common source amplifier with uh, active load or current source load these two dc points are not well established you understand the reason for that right here also these dc points are not well established what is the reason you can fix the dc bias point over here very nicely you can fix the vg common mode whatever dc potential is required for these two also you can fix the vgp also with the current mirror ideally what will you do so uh, here you have that current id right so whatever id is going over here uh, you will uh, you know from there itself you will produce another mirror and uh, this can be uh, maybe 2wp if these are wp this is 2wp and you just connect the uh, you know this one so if this is the connection if this is id and this is identical uh, this is also id this is also id this is same w by 3 3 and 4 identical and therefore you know you get the uh, id by 2 id by 2 ideally this should be having id by 2 id by 2 so if this this is condition sufficient is it uh, going to make it work you so what doing is whatever id is biased over here i am forcing the same like ideally it should have id by 2 id by 2 so i am basically uh, also biasing the upper two transistors at id by 2 id by 2 so is that okay is it sufficient Uh, so here the reference for uh, m3 is not drawn right that like that is understood that is you know i'm not i will not draw the reference every time because it takes some time so whatever is the reference current i ref okay. yes So the current source does not follow Ohm's law, right? So that VD we cannot write as before. We are writing as VD minus ID by two into RD, but now we don't know what. It's not following Ohm's law. Not DC following Ohm's law. Then what is the problem? The like DC level is that not we defined. Have, yeah, DC level is not defined. Why it is not defined? So it depends on KP, KN, and bus parameters. And, uh, yes. So basically, it is highly dependent upon all the uh, device parameters, right? So. Uh, channel and modulation constant so if you want to find out the dc voltage over here i think in one of the lectures i have shown that okay how to calculate that uh, and that all depends upon the uh, channel and modulation factor because for a given bias current you are trying to establish our you know you are trying to find out the drain voltage of this mosfet so here assuming that id by 2 i will do by 2 flows through this you are you know applying a given vg and you are finding out the the drain voltage that depends upon the lambda p as well as lambda n so the device parameters like lambda p lambda n are very much uh, variation sensitive and uh, they will not be very deterministic and another way to look at it is the uh, half circuit 
concept right so if you look at the uh, dc once again you have the half circuit which is composed of an active load and then you have the input device and then uh, you also have the you know the dc point so if you are looking at the common mode half circuit common mode half circuit uh, this is the input vg1 this is your v current mirror vg3 and this is your whatever vg4 so here this is where you are taking the output and uh, uh, here of course you have the stored regeneration you can still you know replace this with ro3 and you are talking about the v out over here so uh, looking at this uh, amplifier once again it is like a uh, basically at this point you have a high impedance node and high impedance node means once again the overall transfer characteristics if you look at it it will be again steep at this point steep at this point means if the v out v out characteristics of this particular circuit will be very steep at this particular point uh, you know and, and therefore you have a very small range of v in which will allow the bias to be in the central region otherwise it will always saturate either to the highest or the lower level so that's why uh, depending upon the device parameters the final value over here it has very less probability of lying in this region of you know output so you can see uh, for this v in v out curve for having the output to be well defined in this in this particular region the range of v in is very very small so for example if i ask you that okay you define a differential amplifier you set up the w by l and uh, you apply a vg such that you choose a vg such that the output dc point is exactly equal to say vdd by 2 so how will you do it so you will connect a, a dc voltage at both the gates vg vg both of them and then you will uh, for a given bias current you will increase the vg right gradually so what will happen initially uh, till your vg is you know not beyond the uh, v over drive of this transistor plus vgs of this transistor so initially v over drive of 3 and you have the vt of 2 so unless the vg is less than this uh sorry less than this you will not have basically any current it will remain off the moment you start going above this the transistor uh you will have sorry v over not v over right this is yeah v over right so the, the now in this case the transistors m1 m2 will start turning on and gradually the source potential over here will also start going up and m3 will eventually enter into saturation region so beyond that point as you go on increasing vg what will happen the source voltage over here will also start rising because you are increasing the vg gradually the source voltage is going up and therefore the drain current over here will also increase from zero it will start going up and finally uh, as this vs becomes greater than uh, vg3 minus vt this will saturate this current will saturate after that the current will remain constant and uh, when this saturates the uh, till that point of course the current has been increasing and therefore the voltage at the output node will also be increasing but uh, once the current saturates we assume that the overall you know, vg vsg of this you know uh, current mirrors are in any way determined by the uh, the vsg of the mirror whatever is the vsg of the mirror but output points are determined by the lambda the channel modulation which will basically determine what is the dc point for a given bias current so once that bias current is set up it solely depends upon the channel and modulation constant or the channel and modulation effect to determine what is the final voltage at the drain so you will see that the value of vg for which the output is able to maintain both the transistor in situation is very very narrow you can do this experiment yourself uh, and figure out that you know the range of vg like suppose we in this case you are just sweeping the vg the range of vg for which you are able to maintain both wp and wn of the uh, differential pair in saturation will be very very narrow so that also tells us that you know even if you even if you set it to that vg right so suppose in the simulation you swept the vg you swept the vg and uh, as you increase the vg as i said the drain voltage will gradually increase 
and uh, it will initially when it was very low uh, the bottom two transistors were completely off output would have been just equal to vdd because these mosfets were on right so uh, this current was flowing these two mosfets were on it would have been uh, you know at almost close to vdd um, and now as you are turning down it will basically uh, as you are increasing the vg it will you know at a certain point it will start going down and then it will basically uh, as you go on increasing finally uh, it will end up in a it will not go to zero but depending upon the vg value this voltage will basically start reducing and it will saturate at a particular value so because uh, after that the input transistor will enter into triode region and uh, the output voltage will also kind of saturate to a low value so now we want to have you know, both the transistor wp wn in saturation so we would like to basically bias it somewhere here so vg should be close to this point corresponding to which we have a good gain and uh, we can we will figure out that the you know the required or the applicable range of vg is very very small for that case that uh, given now suppose you choose this particular vg and now your uh, you know in the circuit you are able to simulate with that vg that okay this vg is giving me exactly mid value of v out so the v out is remaining very close to vd by 2 which is you know perfect for my amplifier but again what is the problem the moment you are go to actual circuits the lambda will vary little bit vt will vary little bit so again uh, in the actual circuit the curves may shift significantly it will shift drastically from you know actual simulation that you have done so simulation versus actual circuit the curves may have shift and because this region is so small you will once again you may end up landing here or here for the output voltage so from that point of view you can you know understand that how difficult it is to make sure that just based on the dc bias at the input and the dc bias current you will be able to bias the output dc point of this particular differential amplifier is it clear so just like a common source the same thing over here only thing is i am trying to explain it with respect to differential amplifier is this clear is this discussion clear so you can in fact do this experiment you just uh, you know you can uh, maybe use a simple differential amplifier all the device for the time being you keep it one micro or two micro all of them uh and bias current maybe just around 0.1 micro or oh, sorry 0.1 milliampere and uh, with this you can try to uh, simulate and see that what is the vg value for which you are able to maintain both these transistors the wp and w and in saturation you will see the range is going to be very very narrow any question on this so dc point of view definitely at least one conclusion we have that here we don't have a good dc bias point at the output now what about uh, what about what about say the frequency response or the small signal gain small signal gain again you will look at the differential and common mode and common mode so differential gain what is the half circuit i hope you can understand half circuit will be like this simple right the input device uh, we will club both the sides right in the differential the source is a common uh, basically is a ac ground so this goes to ac ground and vin is applied over here and uh, this becomes basically uh, if i am looking about say v out so let us keep it say uh, single side so we are just dealing with the single side of the differential amplifier to find out the gain so it is just like a common source with active load and uh, this is also constant so gain is just gm ro by 2 right so in this case gm1 if it is m1 this is uh, m2 m3 so this is gm ro3 by 2 the gain of this state and uh, if you talk about the output of the second state that will also have similar gain and uh, then if you look at the overall differential gain that this is your v out v out 1 so v out 1 is minus gm ro by 2 into v in 1 right this is what we have likewise we have v out 2 which is going to be uh, minus gm 2 ro ro 3 same as ro 4 whatever into v in 2 divided by 2 and therefore the differential output vo2 minus vo1 if we define it that way minus gm assuming that ro is same ro by 2 v in 
minus v in one, right? So uh, your v out two by uh, minus v o one, v o two minus v o one divided by v in two minus v o uh, v in one. That is your differential gain. The differential gain is your A D, which is minus G M R O by two. That is what you are having for the so, differential gain. Like, why yes. is it being divided by two? So like, no. So here we got it right. So V O, what is the V O? V O one and V O two. So V O, we are taking difference of V O one and V O two, right? So we have uh, G M two, uh, G M R O by two, V in two minus V in one. That is your differential output voltage. And uh, your input voltage is V in two minus V in one. So if you look at the differential gain, if I say differential gain uh, V in, if I look at the differential definition, V D is V in minus V in. If I look at that, then it is V in one minus V in two by two. If you don't have any, basically, uh, if the differential signal is V in one minus V in two by two, uh, then we can say that okay, it is going to be just uh, you know G M R O. So here, uh, if I say V D. So V D is defined as V in one minus V in two by two. So if I say V in gain is defined as say V D by V in, then it will not have uh, that term. If gain is defined as V O two minus V O one divided by V in one minus V in two, then it will basically get that. So if I say uh, V O differential upon V D, then you get that you know minus G M R O. Is that clear? Common mode gain, same thing, but we do in the common source. Uh, only thing is, uh, we have already seen the effect of uh, common mode gain in your uh, differential amplifier with uh, your uh, resistive load. Here also we have same story, RO, and uh, you have the two GM of this one. This is becoming RO by two because you are merging the two sides, right? So uh, the load transistors are they become RO by two combined together. Input device becomes two GM. Because of ID getting doubled and the W by L getting doubled, and uh, therefore once again the same express, similar expression. Only thing is, uh, as compared to the R uh, uh, RD in that case, now you have the RO by two in this case. So you get in the numerator GM RO upon one plus GM RS one plus two uh, GM RS, which is RO. So in this case, uh, the advantage. Uh, the as compared to the resistive load we can say that yeah here uh, as compared to uh, the previous case my differential upon common mode gain uh, it is the ratio is not that high because here also we are having gmr in the numerator earlier it was gmrd right so as compared to that here it is uh, gmro upon one plus gmrs so in the in, in the previous case if we assume that your ro is much larger and at higher frequency you are almost getting 2 gm uh, sorry uh, uh, for large value of gmr you are getting almost this expression so the cmrr was ro upon rd sorry uh, rd upon ro so this quantity is the cmrr of that previous resistive load case right uh, and we can say that if your ro is large enough ro rd upon ro is large enough uh, you can get a good cmrr but in this case that advantage is not there uh, you are directly getting one upon 2 So uh, if these two cancel, one upon two. So as compared to the uh, resistive load differential amplifier, this one is, of course, giving you higher gain. But the problem is that common mode, uh, the common mode gain is also, uh, you know, significant and uh, basically higher than the previous case. And therefore, the CMRR is poor in this particular uh, topology. So now, if you look at say. Is, this is clear. Any any question before we uh, go ahead? So that your low frequency, the CMRR is about the same, right? It's coming again minus two. It's coming. Low frequency is same. Uh, yeah. So no. So here we are getting R D upon R O, and here we are getting uh, one upon two, right? So G M R O upon one plus two uh, G M R S. Like in the previous case, we had got two G M R O three as the uh, C M R R O R O three being. No, so here the gain is if you see uh, so here we have the gmrd so differential gain if you see gmrd and this is your uh 2 gmr oh yeah so basically the differential and the uh, this thing uh gmrd yeah so if you look at the ratio gmrd upon 1 plus 
gm rs you are getting almost similar so basically uh, yeah yeah so that is true so in case of uh, ratio if i look at gm ro divided by this quantity that is coming similar that is okay yeah, that is correct yeah so what is happening is i am not you know i am giving classes extempore without <laughs> without recalling the other thing so many things um because i have not revised up i'm just extempore teaching many things i'm uh, sometimes i end up uh, saying which are not accurate so that is that tells that that yeah i mean before coming to the class i need to spend some time in recapping certain things before you know so that is a problem every time i don't get time to basically uh, go through the derivations before i come i just come and you know uh, and if you do these things after a long time you end up messing up on the fly when you teach without practice without uh, revising things uh, you mess up that is what is happening but anyway i have to catch up <laughs> somehow okay so uh, yeah so uh, but i hope you are getting the feel right so that is you know the, uh, here and there you may i may be ending up uh, making expressions wrong but uh, the concept overall is as it is so i will make sure that next time onward you know when i am teaching i at least come with some quick you know revision otherwise on the fly many times it is getting difficult i am ending up uh, making wrong statements or partially incorrect sometimes anyway so yeah so uh, the next part was your frequency response so the, the the overall differential and common mode gain is okay now next part is your frequency response frequency response is almost similar same behavior i don't think we should spend a lot of time on frequency response uh, differential as well as common mode differential is going to be similar to your common source uh, hardly any difference and uh, the common mode part the only difference is now the rs has been replaced by your um, ro so again it will also have similar basically effect so i think uh, from your previous discussion we can still take the similar cue so here also we are going to have similar effect of emrr and dependency on the tail current flow and uh, once the cmrr and the frequency response is done uh frequency response i have not done much because as i just said that it is similar to the previous case uh so dc bias is what we have said that it is not uh, applicable in this case you can't really have uh dc bias at the output but again there are some ways in which we can establish uh dc bias at the gate of this in lab classes what do we do in lab classes if you want to do this kind of active load one way of establishing dc bias would be uh let me one way of establishing dc bias would be to connect uh this transistor in a kind of direct connected mode if you do this and if you keep this values large suppose this r is large and uh, if you are having a cap over here then this becomes almost like an ac ground and if the r is very large then uh, and if you suppose even higher than ro in that case dc point of view it is like a diode connected load dc analysis capacitance will be ignored and uh, the gate voltage and the drain voltage are going to be same because there is no current flow into the gate for the dc analysis therefore what we can assume is that the uh, dc point at the output will be determined by the diode connected condition so whatever is the id by 2 flowing through this uh, the same id by 2 flows through the pmos and therefore depending on the w by l the vgs basically vsg of the pmos will be determined that is going to determine my output dc point so dc point of view this is the scenario ac point of view uh, this becomes ac ground and uh, ro of this mosfet and r will come in parallel so r if it is large as compared to ro suppose ro is 50 kilo ohm and you have made r you know 500 kilo then uh, the overall behavior remains like that only so gm ro uh, gain you are able to get so this is one way uh, which we do it in lab but again in class uh, sorry in actual circuits in on chip circuits you don't have this facility of having a large cap so if you in the on chip circuit you don't put this cap and you put it like this what will happen 
we just put r like this you don't have the cap yes what is the behavior in this case so uh, on chip we are saying we putting a 500 kilo ohm resistor right yeah so registers large registers are possible because we have many ways of uh, you know putting large resistors undo polysilicon uh, resistors are there which are high value so you can have high value resistors even mega ohm resistors possible uh, so that is possible of course area will be like you know larger if you are having larger resistors the area will also be large but undo poly mos uh, sorry polysilicon resistors are pretty uh, high resistivity value that you can do large capacitors you can't do generally because large capacitors uh, consume lot of area on chip uh, highest density capacitors are mos capacitors and there is another one called min capacitor uh, so on chip uh, values for uh, large capacitors are not feasible maximum on a particular analog chip you can have is maybe as i have mentioned totaling up to maybe 1 nanofarad at max uh, including all the decoupling cap etc so the way we put big big capacitor microfarad capacitor in lab that is not possible in the chip individual capacitors in the circuit may be of the range of picofarad max a uh, few picofarad at max so uh, if we don't have the capacitor what will be the behavior so the only thing is that this is no longer an ac ground therefore you are getting some signal over here of course because of the cgs you will have some filtering so it will be like a intermediate of diode connected load and uh, uh, your you know active load depending on the r so if the rc is such that at this point you are still getting good filtering because of the cgs itself uh, you will get some benefit of this r and uh, uh, overall gain will be kind of exact expression you can find out by combining ro r and then the gm behavior comes into picture because effectively it is acting like a diode connected load so the gm will also play a role so it will be a hybrid between uh, uh, differential amplifier with one upon gm load that means the diode connected load and the r the current source load so if you increase the value of r uh, so the filtering effect becomes larger and then it becomes closer to the uh, active load current source load larger value of r means the ac signal will be further suppressed at this point and if it is fully differential then anyway for fully differential signal what will happen this point will be ac ground also just like this point this point will also remain ac ground and therefore it will automatically develop the dc voltage for this point which is given by the uh, output uh, vo out v out 1 plus v out 2 by 2 so uh larger values of r will ensure that it is acting like a current source load so that is one way and then there are other ways in which you can also bias uh, that is based on common mode feedback that we will discuss little later for the time being maybe you can simulate with this particular strategy you can compare what is happening if you increase r what is happening to the small signal gain and also uh if you have say fully connected fully diode connected load that is another that is a simple case where you already have studied in your common source amplifier what happens so here this is another uh, scenario and this one is same as what we have in the common source and we know what are the different uh, you know combinations we have studied you can club current source load with this one in parallel so all those combination we have studied so i hope in a differential amplifier if you are given a load like this you can understand because ultimately if you take the half circuit it remains same like just like what we had studied in the common source exactly same input device n mos and the load device a diode connected pmos and a current source in parallel so uh, uh, this particular topology once again has advantage that the diode connected load will give the dc bias point at this node and then this additional transistor will diverts the current so it will ensure that if you are having id over here you are having only small maybe point 1 id in this one rest of the point 9 id flows to this one and therefore the gm1 upon gm2 ratio will be large uh and, and therefore the gain will be also large so this thing we have studied in common source also same thing you can apply for differential load also so uh in terms of your uh other analysis like if you talk about say uh the swing analysis or input common mode range analysis whatever we have discussed in the first example in the resistive load case 
uh, similar principles you can follow to find out the input common mode range, etc., for all these different different topologies, depending upon the saturation region of all these transistor, right? So uh, one thing is looking at the DC condition, DC bias point. Second, uh, you know, we already studied that okay, the previous topology with current source load does not give you bias point at the output node. That is uh, that can be achieved with the help of this kind of R configuration. Uh, and uh, the other option is that uh, you can use this air connected load that we have studied in the common source case also and uh, use current source in parallel with that. Uh, and uh, you can also go for, uh, I'll study the, I'll study the, uh, this uh, common mode feedback part a little later. I have also recordings, you can go through the recordings also. Uh, let me, yeah. So regarding the noise part also, noise also similar constraint, right? So similar considerations. Noise, uh, before we go to the noise, another important point is the differential to common mode conversion that also we should be very much aware of equal to common mode or basically uh, the reverse. Common mode to differential conversion. So here, what happens? You have so far we have assumed that all these transistors, resistors are all ideal, right? So let us, you know, do this with resistive load that is easier to look at. Now you might have studied if you have studied Razavi, I think it is already there. This analysis might be there. Otherwise, some other books also have this kind of analysis. But this is important to understand what happens if you have a mismatch, and that is also going to help us in understanding the noise effect. Um, so we have seen that if you have GM, if you exactly matched, then you basically uh, get a uh, perfect differential signal. So if you are applying a perfect differential input, like perfect sinusoid, which is uh, completely opposite in phase and there is no common mode, the output will also be fully differential. There is no common mode signal at the output. That is what is expected out of a good differential amplifier. Uh, First of all, the common mode gain should be low. Whatever common mode appears at the input, that should be rejected. And second, if you have differential signal, pure differential signal at the input, uh, you get pure differential signal at output. You should not have any uh, common mode signal coming. But that is again true only for ideal uh, differential amplifier where all the RD, W by L of these two MOSFETs are all matched. So the condition here is that the RD and W by L, the two parts of the differential circuits are fully matched. What happens if you have a small mismatch? So for example, if you have RD plus Delta RD, this is easy to do. So if you have RD plus Delta RD, and if you have say only common mode signal, there is no differential signal, only common mode. VCM, both of them are common. That means you are connecting, tying both of them together uh, like this. You are connecting both of them together and applying a AC signal plus DC of course, whatever is the DC bias required. Uh, plus, you know, VDC, and you have a, a common mode AC signal. Uh, on in this case, if I look at the overall, you know, bias current, bias currents are not going to change because the gate voltage is fluctuating in the same manner. So, whatever current was going through both of them, if I ignore the channel modulations for the simplicity purpose, if I assume that that current change is very small, and uh, you know, you have all still almost ID by two, ID by two flowing through both of them. Again, this is an approximation, right? Uh, so this is assuming that the MOSFETs are exactly same and then uh, the uh, channel and modulation effect is very small. If you do that, then uh, if you are uh, changing the bias current, uh, sorry, if you're changing the common mode voltage. Uh, so what should happen in this case, you are getting with the same ID by two, basically you are getting a, a you know ID by two delta RD. So even without any uh, signal, you are first of all getting a different DC level. So the output you are having uh, a different DC level, which is uh, delta ID by two times or delta RE times ID by two. So that means the DC level are not exactly same here. And then when you connect this particular point to the next stage, that will create further problem because it will have a mismatched DC because of the uh, RD coming into picture. 
also if you look at uh, say the this mismatch in the say gm so gm you can again write it as gm plus delta gm so suppose you have the two gms gm plus delta gm another one suppose gm minus delta GM, or just take it as gm what is the effect of that on the uh, output so now if we say that the delta gm once again is small again we can take some simplification so what will happen for a given vg applied so if the vcm is same and gm is uh, slightly different so what is expected the small signal current because for both of them vgs is same so vgs1 is same as vgs2 ac plus dc and uh, you are having one of them small signal current given by if i look at id if i call it 2 i call it 1 id2 small signal is going to be uh, gm plus delta gm uh, times the vgs2 which is basically different from id1 which is just gm times vgs2 which is same the g and s are same both both of them therefore i'm going to get a delta gm times vgs2 current difference and that current difference if i assume that the r values are same that current difference is going to cause what it is going to cause a uh, difference in the uh, output signal and that is basically a small signal so output delta v out because of this delta v out or let me go down rather so delta v out because of this ac signal is delta gm vgs into rd if i just look at the differential signal so you are getting effectively a differential signal without any differential input so this is called basically uh, differential to uh, common mode differential conversion common mode to differential conversion that means that even without any uh, differential signal even when your input signals are common that means they are common mode uh, you are getting because of the change in the common mode signal itself you are getting a differential signal at the output so whenever you have mismatch in the circuit you are going to have this effect that even without any uh, basically change in the uh, common mode uh, any change in the differential signal just because of the change uh, in a common signal which is a common mode signal which may be a common noise which may be a common fluctuation which may be a shift in the dc level which should not be amplified by the differential amplifier it will get converted into a differential signal at the output of the differential amplifier so this becomes you know very critical when you are processing very small signals or you know a very weak signals because ultimately if your mismatches are large it will lead to a large basically common mode differential conversion it will as compared to the ideal differential signal that you should have got it will add its own basically uh, differential component on the output which is not a part of the signal so this is going to actually corrupt your actual signal so this is going to be very uh, uh, this is a non ideality effect in the differential amplifier which we should be aware of this common mode to differential conversion now if we look at the effect of that in the noise what happens so this concept we should just uh, you know keep note of so that the noise analysis part also uh, is clear so noise analysis when we look about the differential part again we will do the same thing ac ground and then the noise analysis of differential part is you know remaining same as what we have done earlier for common source there is no difference so uh, we, we can ignore this part we can uh, recall our discussion in the common source common uh, the common mode noise common mode noise what is the what is the uh, situation so the common mode noise this is uh, our overall circuit half circuit this is the input device 1 comma 2 this is output device 3 comma 4 and this is your whatever tail current device and uh, uh, here if we understand from our previous discussion on cascode amplifier which transistors suppose all these are ac ground right so we are looking at the noise contribution at the output so that we can figure out the input referred noise so in this case which transistors are going to contribute to the noise uh, m5 should contribute one to two the gain is very less so yeah, so one to two, we have uh, this source generation coming into picture again. Therefore, it does not contribute too much to the noise. Uh, same story as your cascode amplifier or uh, you know uh, 
your uh, common gate amplifier that we have studied earlier. Uh, whereas the other transistors, three, four, as well as five, they are having gain because they are like, uh, you know, common source amplifiers. So here uh, for M5, it is just, if you have a gate noise voltage, it will directly get a gain to the output. Likewise, if this one is having some noise voltage at the gate, that will also reflect at the output. Uh, now, the scenario is that if you look at the, uh, if you're talking about differential signals, right? So if you're taking the signal differentially, uh, we can assume that uh, we are having contribution of only the top transistor because in the differential mode, uh, you are having contribution of both these sources, this one as well as this one. So, you know, and the current source doesn't play any role. So for differential mode, we ignore, right? So we say that, okay, this is not coming into picture. This is an AC ground, therefore, uh, for differential amplification, as long as you are taking the signal differentially, that means you are, uh, for the next stage, you're taking the diff signal differentially and applying to the next differential stage. So in that case, the common mode noise is not going to be uh, you know, uh, important. And second thing is the role of the M5 does not come into picture. The, co the role of M5 uh, is reflected only in the common mode noise. It is not coming in the differential path, right? Because it is AC ground. But now, uh, once again, the M5 role will become important if you consider the mismatches. So if the device is not perfectly matched, then once again, uh, the two paths that you are getting for M5, they are not exactly same. So the concept is this, that if you have, say, a common noise source, uh, Vn square, and uh, you are feeding it to two transfer functions, H1, S, H2, S, and then you're looking at the output noise over here. Uh, so we know that ultimately uh, it will be Vn square H1 square S net, right? So right, like this one also Vn square H2 square S. So if H1, uh, you know, if you look at if you're looking at the uh, H1 H2, if they are in this case, you know, uh, the noise power over here they are exactly same. If H1 H2 are very well matched. So in the common mode, whatever noise power you are getting over here, they are exactly, you know, the magnitude point of view, they are same. But in real circuit, that never happens, right? So these two paths, this is a current source at the tail, which is producing some noise. And then you have the two paths, wherever, you know, you have the, just like this, you have the two paths and you are looking at the output at this point. So uh, this point, once again, because of the differences, because of the mismatches, you can end up having effective contribution of the tail current source also in the noise. So that becomes more evident when you're looking at mismatches in the circuit or incorporating the effect of mismatches. If you are simulating exactly ideal circuit with exact mismatch, then tail current source does not matter. But in reality, we should be aware that it does matter. Uh, so that is what we should keep in mind. So in, in ideal scenario, somebody asks you a tail current source, does it have any noise contribution for differential amplifier? No, but non-ideal case, yes, because of all these mismatch issues. I hope that is clear. Any uh, question till this point? Uh, so like uh, there is one like uh, other meeting is there at seven o'clock. So like is it possible that we can leave at seven o'clock today? Uh, that is okay. Yes, any other question? Professor Devnath will be taking a meeting actually. This is for what? Uh, so like uh, one. Uh, like electric vehicle one meeting is there today, so there for electric vehicles. Uh, okay, so you know if you have to work in uh, these projects, VLSI related projects, then of course uh, you know uh, you will have to focus on one thing. If you do too many things together, <laughs> then uh, there will also be because ultimately uh, it's the uh, you know you have to choose what exactly which direction because these are two orthogonal directions. Electric vehicle uh, that is the orthogonal direction. VLSI is a different direction. Uh, so uh, try to focus on one thing rather than experimenting too many. So right now we are gradually going to go and ramp up some of the you know assignment and project activities because uh, you know we need to speed up. And uh, that uh, my uh, again target was that okay very quickly we can cover some of the topics which are missing in the analog circuit course so that all of us come to the platform where uh, we can start working on some 
you know, um, first of all, of course, some light, some higher level theories will also be covered. And after that, uh, we can, you know, uh, induct some people who are interested in projects as well. So, uh, means uh, that process I have to start very soon. So, uh, it, and, and then if you have to work on VLSI projects, it requires a lot of focus. If you uh, work on 10 other things, then uh, focus on the design project will not be that much. And it requires commitment, uh, especially if you want to get, suppose, a paper in a short enough time or, uh, you know, get uh, some, you know, nice application design. So there are a lot of ideas that we keep getting. So uh, our strategy is that uh, uh, some of the ideas which are maybe, you know, we keep on working on industry projects and there are some ideas that we come across which may be publishable, which has some R&D component. So for those components, uh, you know, uh, the undergrad students, especially, even PhD students, they can take up those and they can uh, do the analysis that we are suggesting and that can lead to good learning. And at the same time, it can lead to uh, maybe a good academic outcome in terms of paper, etc. Uh, so that is the overall plan. So right now also working on some of the current projects, we have uh, several nice ideas which can be converted into publication with a little bit of effort uh, and for They uh, take up some of those examples and they, you know, through that they, first of all, get ready. They get learning also. They get ready for their, uh, you know, uh, whether it is job or admits. And at the same time, the good or academic output can come, come. So if people have to get engaged in that, then, you know, you need to uh, maybe focus on one thing rather than putting in your hands into too many things. So that is one suggestion that I would have for those who are, uh, you know, of course, I, I feel that sometimes I'm not doing enough justice. Many times I'm just coming unprepared and doing extempore and sometimes I get messed up, uh, especially when I'm not fresh. So that part I have to improve. I have to come with some planning rather than going extempore. Extempore teaching is uh, getting risky. So that part I will improve. But yeah, I mean, my overall objective of spending time over here is to get some of you prepared for those who are interested. You can get prepared for some nice project activities. And we can start this summer itself. But for that, uh, you know, you need to speed up. And I also, of course, uh, I also need to speed up. Right now, uh, whatever topics I'm covering, probably I need to accelerate that and give you some more reading assignment rather than teaching everything, uh, so so that you know uh, we can quickly come to the platform where uh, we can get started on uh, uh, some nice projects. So that is the idea. So all of you, those who are interested in taking up this route. Uh, we will have more discussion on this topic, but just to uh, make you aware that ultimately, you know, that is my objective. He, you know, out of this, if we are, uh, some of you are coming forward, getting interested, and uh, we can align you with some of the projects, uh, probably, uh, you know, we can get started this summer itself. Uh, in, in certain cases, we can also induct you in some of the company projects where uh, you will probably, uh, that is slightly difficult at this stage, but definitely research-oriented things where uh, publications are possible and nice ideas are there, which probably uh, with some analysis you can uh, document and publish. Those kind of things can be uh, started, that can be done. That is our objective. So, so yeah, so be please, please be, you know, uh, ready for a ramp up in this course. I need to uh, give you more reading assignments and speed up the teaching also so that uh, we can quickly arrive at that point. Yes, yeah, so any question? Yeah, I mean, many times I'm embarrassing myself also by not preparing and coming just like that. And uh, uh, if you don't uh, prepare, if you're teaching something after, uh, I'm teaching these things almost after two years. So last summer also I did not teach. And uh, uh, then, you know, after a long time when you teach many other derivations, etc., evaporate. <laughs> so unless you are uh, recalling it before class, you may be in trouble. So, uh, especially in class, you know, if you are teaching and you're not, uh, you have not planned and coming extempore, that is a little bit risky. That's what I'm realizing. Earlier, if you're fresh with the things and you're, you know, uh, if you're teaching every year, things are very fresh and uh, you can, without any preparation, without looking at anything, you can come and teach. Uh, but after a gap, if you do it, <laughs> it's a problem. So uh, that I realized in a couple of classes. Today also, I made a lot of, uh, messes that I have to overcome. 
so that i'm worried that that may have a negative impact people may say that okay uh, you know they may get little disappointed so don't be disappointed uh, the ultimate objective is to uh, basically get the concepts right and uh, uh, apply those concepts in some interesting uh, projects uh, learn those concepts and uh, build your basics so that will happen yes so, so uh, any question before we conclude uh, so right now we have already covered uh, quite a bit uh, but uh, still regarding this particular uh, topic any questions tomorrow onwards i will come with a bit of preparation not like this so it's not a good idea that you are also spending two hours of time and i am also spending two hours of time so we should not uh, come without any preparation and just uh, extempore teaching that's not a good idea yes so any any question before we come or differential amplifier whatever video recordings etc whatever i gave you yes any question nobody has any question i see some chat i don't know what is this chat uh, frequency response was not discussed in lecture 10 and there should be two in the denominator okay so frequency response anyway i have discussed to some extent uh yeah so any anything else quickly any question so yeah once again uh, i am sorry for some of the uh mishaps that i keep making but uh, i will try to be 